To get started, let's go into the jeweler's bench and create a ring size builder. And we're going to choose the size of the ring that we want. I'm going to do a size 7. Uh, we don't really need the top plane for this, this project since we're just doing a band. Um, so you can turn off the defined top plane. And it also doesn't really matter if your starting point is at the top or the bottom. I'm going to leave it at the top on this one and validate. And then the next step I want to do is we're going to set up our pattern and we want to make that pattern roughly the same size as the circumference of our ring so that when we wrap it, it doesn't distort too much um, and we don't have any problems with the deform. So the first thing I need to do is find out what is the circumference of this ring size. Uh, if you go to the solid bench down to the measure section, we have curve analysis. So select the ring, click on curve analysis and we just validate and it's going to give us the circumference of the ring 54.507 in this case so I'm gonna go into a sketch in the OXY plane and click on access the sketch and I'm just gonna set up a box that is the same size as my circumference so the width will be 54.5 doesn't have to be exact and the thick the um, the height doesn't really matter I'll just leave it at 10 for now and center the box okay so that'll give us a, um, a guide so that when we place our image we know what size to make it so we'll go ahead and back out of that we're going to place an image in the OXY plane so in the solid module at the support section at the very bottom the last tool here is image in plane and you're going to load your image. Um, I'll provide this in the video page. You'll be able to download this image so you can follow along with the same pattern or you can try out different patterns if you want. I'm going to go to desktop. Let's see. It's in here. Videos, filigree, and here's my pattern. So once you found your image and loaded it, we're going to go ahead and size it. So it's roughly the right length of our box that we created. Okay, I'm also going to center it a little bit. It seems to be off just a hair. So something like that. Okay, I like to freeze my image that way when I'm drawing on top of it, I don't accidentally click on it and double click and edit it. Um, then we'll go back into our original sketch with the rectangle. You can hide or delete that rectangle at this point. Actually, we'll leave it showing because we'll use that as a snap point for the ends of our pattern. And the first step is I'm going to trace the center line of my filigree pattern. This is wavy pattern going down the center. So we'll just go ahead and snap that to the edge and then start tracing it and we're just trying to be as accurate as possible keeping our points spread out nice and evenly so we get nice smooth arcs with our NURBS curve and then we'll end it right about there actually we validate Okay, now these ends are gonna be um, a little tough to match up. They're not going to meet up when we wrap it anyway. Um, so it's okay that they're not even. What we'll do is adjust it after we get it wrapped. So I'll show you how we can fix that issue instead of having to go through the trouble of mathematically trying to make this perfect. We'd have to have the same tangency on both sides and make sure the points are even. A lot of extra math and work that we shouldn't have to do if we um, just clean it up later on. Um, so the rest of our pattern, it just repeats. So we're just going to draw one of them and we'll repeat it later. So we'll use more NURBS curves and we'll zoom in over here on the left side and we'll just kind of follow along that curve. Something like that. And this one. And finally, this one. Okay, you can always go to your edit tool, clean up any areas if you need to. I think I've got mine pretty, pretty accurate. 
And that's it for sketching. We're ready to start creating our objects that we can wrap this to our ring. So we'll exit the sketch. You can hide your image in plane. Right click and hide. And then we'll go ahead and hide our box. We don't need that anymore. And we can also hide our curve analysis. Okay, so what we're gonna do is multi-pipe. And we're actually just gonna multi-pipe these one at a time. So we're just piping them. Um, the reason I wanna do that, I don't wanna make these the exact same diameter, the same thickness for each one of these. Um, your first instinct would be to just go ahead and sweep them or pipe them all the exact same thickness. You're gonna have some Boolean issues if you do that, because we're gonna be using round profiles. They're not gonna match up evenly where these meet up. So what we'll do is we'll vary the sizes. So we'll start with the center line here and we'll multi-pipe. And we're gonna go to round. You can use custom shapes as well. Um, I'm gonna do round and we're gonna do the first one 1.1 millimeters. And we'll choose my metal. I'll do precious gold, I'll do white gold for now. And we'll go ahead and validate that. And then we'll do the same thing for this one multi-pipe round and this one I'm gonna make uh, 0.2 millimeters smaller than the other one so this one's gonna be 0.9 gives us a nice varying thickness should get some clean booleans there let's go ahead and validate that um, and then we'll do this longer one here next that one will also be 0.9 so multi-pipe round 0.9 and we're going to validate that. And then finally for this one, because it's going into the 0.9, it needs to be a little bit smaller as well. So this one we're going to make round and 0.7. So 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.11, it gives us a good two tenths of a millimeter in varying sizes, that way they all overlap and blend together nicely. We don't have any self-intersections or um, coplanar surfaces or weird problems that'll cause um, the deform and Boolean issues. Okay, so now we need this to repeat. So we're going to take this group here and clone and just slide it over into position. Be very careful that when we slide into position, it still overlaps nicely. It's not sticking through the other side. So I'm just gonna move it until it disappears like that. And then we'll take the clone and clone it again for our last piece of the pattern. Same thing, just make sure it all overlaps nicely. So oh, I got this end lined up. I forgot about this end. Let's make sure we fix that. So let's go back and look at the middle one. So yeah, I got this part sticking through, so I didn't quite move it over enough. So we'll make sure that disappears as well. So check both connections, make sure they're buried in the larger pipe. So because I changed that one, I'll just recompute the other clone, double click back in here and fix that one as well. Make sure everything looks nice and clean. Okay. So that's pretty much it. We've got our filigree laid out. Now we need to wrap it to our ring. So we're gonna select all of our parts. And you can group them together if you want. It's gonna group them automatically when we wrap them. So we'll go down to deform, wrap along curve. Okay, so we've already got our objects selected. We're going to select the plus here to add the curve that we're wrapping it to. It's gonna to wrap to the curve. And then we need to uh, uh, adjust its rotation and alignment. So we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees, so it's going around that direction. And it's not gonna be vertical, we want horizontal alignment so that it's outside of our ring finger. Make sure it's outside of the ring finger. In this case, we're looking at left horizontal. Okay. The other options we have is limit to object size. In this case, our object is pretty much the exact size that we made the, um, the band, the circumference of the band. So we shouldn't have to use that option, but V9 now has an option um, that'll keep your object the same size as it wraps around instead of stretching it throughout the entire curve. So, so if you're, um, your objects are different sizes, you don't take that extra step to measure first. It's a great new option you could use to still wrap things and not have them fail as much. Um, so we'll leave that off. Go ahead and validate. Okay, so it looks good. And we see um, 
The only problem we have is this little bit of a gap here in between the tops. Okay, and it looks like I've got mine lined up pretty well. If they aren't, you know, tangently going together, just go back into this sketch, move your points up and down here, use your arrow keys, you know, maybe move this one up a little bit, move this one down a little bit, recompute, you'll see that'll affect the angles at the ends. You just wanna get them so that they're facing each other. So you see now mine is off, so I'm gonna go back the opposite direction. We'll go down and up and recompute. Did I go the wrong direction again? Let's see. Down two, up two, no, I think I should have left good enough alone. Um, Hopefully yours came out nice and even too. So yeah, now we're way off. Let's go ahead. What if we um, place these both at the zero at the center line? Get us back to closer to being lined up and then we'll adjust from there. So, okay, so now we see we're way off here. Um, so we're going to go down to and up to recompute. So we're just gonna tweak it almost there, down one, up one, recompute. There we go. So now we're back to where I was, that looks better. Okay, now one other issue I'm gonna have here is I'm going to, oh no, it won't be an issue. We're gonna separate these. So go ahead and exit out of the sketch. Um, so what we would do is um, isolate this center pipe, the one that has the gap in it to be able to fix it. We're gonna filter it. So down in the group section, select your group and hit filter and then select the one we want to filter, that center pipe, and then make sure you click on create another subgroup. So that way when we validate, we can select that group or that single pipe by itself. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is remove the faces inside here, both of those. Make sure you hit control and select both. Validate that. So now we have a tube or a um, surface and we need to fill that in. So we're going to extract curves. We're gonna extract both of those of the circle on that side and validate. Select it again and select both of those on that side and validate. And then we're simply going to loft between these two curves. So select those two curves. Go up here to construct loft. We're gonna turn off the cap's end. We don't want a cap back inside there. So turn that off. And it's a very simple loft with two curves, so we don't have any other adjustments to make. So go ahead and validate that. And then we'll select those two surfaces and weld it back together. Remember, weld is for surfaces, Boolean is for solids. So validate that when you weld it back together everything should be lined up so it's now back to a solid you can run your part doctor and preview if you want to make sure it's solid true okay got a little bit of a violation of tolerance not a big deal um, these edges may be off by just a you know thousandths of a millimeter um, as long as it's solid should be good to go okay so there's one more thing I wanna do. Um, I forgot to do this step. Um, these are flat on the end. In our piping options, go back to our filter, warp along curve. We're gonna go back to the other multi-pipes, number two, three, and four. And we'll just go ahead and change the channel ending to rounded. Okay, so go ahead and do that on four, three, and two. And this one. And make sure you're changing the channel ending, not the beginning. And recompute. And now we see all of our pipes should be rounded. I think we missed one here. And let's see. The fun part is figuring out which pipe that is that's now rounded. Oh, 
That's my fault. I changed the beginning and not the ending after I said not to do that. Make sure we're doing the ends of each one of those and recompute. And I think that'll look much nicer. Perfect. All right, so we're all good. We're going to go ahead and select our group and that center pipe back together and we'll do a Boolean add operation. And we're good to go. Let's go ahead and hide our sketches. If you have your um, section for sketches set up in your F12 options, you can just hide the entire section. And then we'll reshow the ring size builder. We're gonna go ahead and select that ring size builder in the jewelers bench. We're gonna use sweeping wizard to create our bands. Let's click on sweeping wizard. Go to the second tab for sections, add a section to the list. And then we're going to use the library button to load the section. So click on that, bring this library up a little bit. We're going to go under 2D symbols, rails, and we're going to use square number two. Okay, we're going to go to the scale tab and go ahead and make that slightly bigger than our pipes. Again, varying all our sizes a little bit whenever you're working on this filigree work. It's a good idea to vary things so we get nice connections between them. So we'll make the bands just slightly taller than the um, than the pipes. Go ahead and validate that, simple sweep. And then we'll just move this into position. So back to the solid bench, position, move, rotate, scale. Flip over to the side view and we'll go ahead and slide that just in the Y direction so that it's meeting up with our filigree. Validate that. And we'll mirror, select the one side and use duplicate mirror for the other side. Okay, now before we put all this together, I want to make sure there's no problems with my filigree pieces before I try to add them to these. This is another place where you might run into Boolean issues. We're taking these perfectly round pipes, putting them into flat walls. The geometry doesn't always quite match up, so you'll see some bad edges or some warnings in the tree. Um, so before we do that, and this is good advice on anything you're doing. If you do a major Boolean like this, you can run your part doctor. The part doctor will give you some technical information. Um, but I jump right into polygon conversion. Polygon conversion has the same settings we use when you export. I have mine set for resolution custom, chord height tolerance at zero, 0 0.003, leave the face angle at 30 degrees, and then I have my split uh, precision set to very fine. You may have to adjust this. Um, if you get some errors at very fine, try different levels of precision. Um, that'll sometimes go ahead and tell, uh, fix the errors for you. You won't have to go back and move things around. Um, but you'll do that on the export step. Right now we're just checking it for problems. Because um, if we have any problems at this point, we need to fix them before we boolean everything together. Um, so display errors should be checked, correct should be unchecked. Go ahead and hit preview, the little blue icon. Give that a moment to calculate. Okay, so very heavy geometry. It may have taken a minute to calculate, um, but I see I have no red edges, no red lines. If you had any, they would be very bright red. They show through other objects. They'll show up immediately. If you have any, what you're gonna wanna do is maybe roll things back to where it was flat, um, adjust, uh, make sure these are all overlapping nicely. Because we took the extra time to make them different sizes, should have no problems there. Um, you can always call the support desk if you run into little issues like that. Send your um, send your file by email, and I'll check it out and help you out with it. Um, so the polygons look good. We don't want to validate this. That will convert it to polygons. It'll no longer be a smooth model. Um, so go ahead and just cancel out of there. So since that looks good, we should be able to go ahead and Boolean it all together. Selecting all the parts and do another Boolean add. Okay. It boolean pretty quickly. We should be good. Just make sure you um, check your polygons one more time. Um, you can do this in the export step as well. Okay, looks good. No bad edges. This is good to go. We'll go ahead and cancel out of this. Um, we'll use the same settings, export it, print the SDL. Good to go. Uh, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.